How's it going guys, Ben here with Attack Triad and today we're going to be unboxing the Nexus Player. Now we just got this in and we're going to be bringing a full review but first let's go ahead and unbox it and go ahead and set it up. So first a quick tour of the box. On the one side it's actually in French which is a little different but on the other side it's in English. So we have Your Entertainment by Nexus. Uh, personalized recommendations, Android gaming on the big screen, cast your phone or tablet screen, uh, voice search, and of course it's powered by Android TV. Now it does have Chromecast capabilities, which is a nice addition. Of course here we have a picture of the Nexus player and its remote. And then on the back it's hooked up to a TV, we get it, get it on Google Play, YouTube, and Google Cast ready, which again works with a Chromecast. So let's go ahead and open up the box. And then right on top here we have the uh, Nexus player, which basically this looks like a gigantic hockey puck. But let's go ahead and take the plastic off. That was extremely satisfying. But it's just a circle on the back here. We have our, oh, another piece of plastic. We have our power port, a micro USB cable, and an HDMI port. And then actually there's some plastic here on the edges. So let's go ahead and take that off as well. And there we go. So overall, this part, of course, this is just going to be sitting on your table. So let's go ahead and see what else is here inside the box. We have a quick little uh, <clears throat> setup manual here. It's setup is pretty simple. So we'll go ahead and move on from there. And we'll go ahead and check out the remote. OK, so in this little box, we actually have some batteries and the uh, wall adapter as well as the remote. So I'm going to try to get it out here. All right, first we got the remote out. And the remote is also inside of some pl a little plastic baggie. So the remote's pretty simple. We have our voice search button, our D-pad with enter button, Play, pause, back, uh, menu button, the Nexus logo, and then an LED and microphone up on top. So pretty simple. It feels good in the hands. Of course, I'm not going to judge the weight yet because I haven't put batteries in it. But let's go ahead and get the rest of this stuff out, which basically this is just the um, wall adapter and the batteries for the remote. So I'll get those out off camera and I'm going to go ahead and get this thing plugged in. Quick note though, this does not come with an included HDMI cable, which is a little bit surprising. This is similar to what you'd see on the Amazon Fire TV, except with Fire TV you are offered one. With the uh, Nexus player you are actually not. So just a quick note, you will need an HDMI cable when you get your hands on a Nexus player. But let's go ahead and get this plugged in and then I will come back. Okay, so now the Nexus player has been set up and it is booting up for the first time. Now, please ignore the not so good quality of my cheap off-brand TV and all of the fingerprints on the TV. Again, this is just an off-brand. I don't put a lot of value in my bedroom TV. But anyway, uh, this is booting up. I'm going to fast forward until it is turned on completely, and then we'll come back. Okay, so now we are finishing up with the boot, and first thing we're going to do when this boots up is let the remote pair, and this is done automatically. All you have to do is press the button on the remote, any button you want, and then it will go ahead and connect. And once that's done, we will next go ahead and connect it to our Wi-Fi network. Okay, so pairing of the remote is done. Now we're going to choose a language, and then we're going to choose our Wi-Fi network. Now I'm going to blur out my... Uh, Wi-Fi password here, but basically it's pretty easy. You just type it in your Wi-Fi password. It will go ahead and connect. It does work on 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi networks, so that is a huge plus. Of course, no Ethernet is included on the Nexus player. But next, go ahead and update to Android 5.0. This should take about 10 minutes depending on your internet connection, and I'll come back as soon as it's done. Thank you. 
Okay, so now we are booted back into Android 5.0, and first thing off the bat, of course, we get our Android is upgrading, which should only take a second, because you really haven't installed anything yet. And we're going to go ahead and sign into Google. Now, you can use your phone or your laptop to do this, or you can log in manually. I used my phone off screen, just for sake of uh, simplicity, and it's pretty easy. You just go ahead and go to the URL that it shows here on screen, and then you go ahead and type in the pin you see. You log in with your Google account and you're good to go. Now real quick note while setup is continuing, you can only have one Google account on your Android TV which I found quite an annoyance. But now we are going ahead and we are finally into Android TV. Now the interface is pretty simplistic. Basically we have a row of apps, you'll have a row of games once you install some, and then you have your settings and Wi-Fi. Inside the settings you just have a selection of a few different settings you can tweak on a device accessories, personal options, things are pretty simple on the Android TV interface. Now the uh, Nexus TV does come with 8GB of storage and a gig of RAM in it, which is plenty for this type of thing. Now something I found kind of funny is this still has the Android 5.0 Easter egg, which if you weren't aware is basically Flappy Bird. So that's actually kind of awesome and I can see this being kind of a fun thing to do just on the TV. Works pretty easy with the remote, and I'm probably better at it on here than I am on uh, my Nexus 9. But again, the uh, interface is pretty simple. There's plenty of material design aspects to it, and overall, it's just pretty nice. Now, there aren't that many apps out there yet for Android TV, but I do expect it to grow in the near future, or at least I hope it does. But anyway, that's going to go ahead and do it for this video. If you guys have any questions about the Nexus player, be sure to leave them in a comment down below, and I will be sure to include them in my full review, which should be coming in a couple of weeks. Now, additional coverage for the Nexus player will also include comparisons with the Chromecast and the Fire TV, so definitely stay tuned for that. We will be bringing our full review in just a few weeks. We're going to give this a very, very good shot and see how good it really is and see if it's worth the $99. But again, that's going to go ahead and do this for this video. Be sure to give this video a like, subscribe for more, and we will catch you guys in the next one.